right now, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. <clears throat> Redo. <laughs> Take two. Well, all right now. Welcome back to my YouTube channel there, everybody. Uh, we're going to talk today a little, a little bit about uh, what it would take to, to work with a logging company or uh, have logs delivered to do a firewood business. So uh, stick with me because we're going to kind of ramble all over the place a little bit here. But I was thinking the other day about my business and uh, the way that I sell and the way that I process firewood. And uh, I realized that uh, I, this year I've only come across uh, one load of cherry from the tree service. And I did have another cherry tree that fell down that I processed. So I got a little bit of cherry. I got absolutely zero hickory this year. Uh, didn't find any, didn't come across any hickory. A little bit disappointing, but uh, there just wasn't any. And I got a little bit of oak now. And uh, the oak that I got was uh, red oak and pen oak maybe, uh, mainly. A lot of pen oak really, and, which is in the red oak family. But I don't think I got any white oak either. So uh, white oak is really I think the the preferred smoking wood for oaks and now you can use you can use any oaks to smoke meat with but uh, white oak is the preferred and I don't have any white oak that I know of out there uh, maybe just a couple small little sticks but uh, that's just the way it works when you when you deal with a tree service these guys they don't have control over what woods they cut now uh, they are totally happy cutting pine or evergreens or trimming bushes or whatever it takes. It's the same money to them. As long as they're busy and they're making money, they don't have control over, oh, we're going to go out and cut white oak today. Uh, so you just got to take whatever they give you. And, and the guys that I work with are, are, are excellent people. Uh, I, try to, I can't emphasize it enough. I, I love them, and uh, they do a lot for me. And... Uh, and I, I try to help them out and get their lots cleaned up the best I can with just one person. And, and I'm so busy to, doing deliveries and everything right now, I don't even have time to uh, go process wood. And, and it's, it's going to be raining for like 10 days, so I don't know when I'm going to be able to get back out there. Anyway, see, I'm getting off subject already. But uh, the point of my story is... Uh, I was looking at getting like just just thinking like what if I wanted to try to pick up some restaurants there and stay busy during the summer and grow my business and get and and get more more uh, continuity going with staying busy all year and that type of thing. Well, uh, a restaurant is going to want a lot of wood and it's going to have to be homogenous wood, the the same kind of wood. They're going to need like a quart a month or so of just oak or just hickory or just cherry. And uh, you got to be able to meet those needs, right? So if you're working with a tree service and the wood comes trickling in every day, little by little, as they do their jobs, and you know some weeks there's not even any wood because they're they're doing trimming or evergreens or landscaping or whatever else they do now. So uh, you don't really have control over that. You can't get enough. You can't get you can't get a cord of hickory every month and do ten restaurants all over town and have ten cords of hickory. So if you follow firewood and you watch other businesses and things you know that you need to you're gonna to have to buy logs to do that uh, if you wanted to step your business up and work with restaurants and have that kind of uh, like I said homogenous is the word homogenous uh, trees or logs you're gonna to have to buy them now that's that costs money that's you're gonna pay I would say at least twelve hundred to sixteen hundred dollars a, a log truck load of that type of wood and uh, and you got to find a logger. So that's where, that's kind of where I'm coming from now today. And so I spent an hour or so researching this uh, on my couch the other day just for fun. Uh, now, I just got started, so I haven't really got deep into it. Like I said, I spent about an hour doing this. Uh, and I just wanted to kind of talk about my results and what I found out. Uh, as you may know from the channel name, Kentucky Koozie, uh, I'm located in the great state of Kentucky out here, and uh, we are kind of like in the hardwood, uh, cap hardwood belt capital area of the country. I mean, we have, we're right in the middle, so it's, it's warm, it, we're called the gateway to the south, so uh, we got, it's warm enough that we can have some of the uh, pines and things that are, that are around, uh, 
that you see down in South Carolina, and I, I, I was from South Carolina, so that's why I say that. Down there around the coast, there's pine trees everywhere. But so, I mean, we got a mix. We got a mix of the southern trees, and then we have a mix of the northern trees coming down. So we've got the northern red oaks, we've got the pin oaks, we've got uh, red oaks, we've got, ev we've got everything here. Hickories, Osage orange, uh, we have it all here. So I thought, surely there's some good logging companies around, and, uh, and when you really get to thinking about it, I, I never see log trucks uh, out on the roads. I'm in, I'm in the Louisville area here in Kentucky, and uh, I can't tell you the last time I've seen a log truck with like a, a, a hydraulic grapple on it. I don't think I have ever seen one in Kentucky, which I, it kind of blows my mind because they're just not out there. Uh, the last uh, load of logs that I saw if you look in my videos now, when I bought that uh, utility trailer, there's a little small log truck when I'm driving to pick that trailer up on the road that I filmed, and it doesn't even have a, a sign on the door or anything. It was probably just some smaller independent boutique uh, sawmill guy or something that, had a, that was picking up some logs because it doesn't have a grapple on it, nothing. So he's going to have to drive that little log truck somewhere and unload it with, with some forks or something. But... Uh, that's the only log truck I can remember even seeing in the Louisville area, right? So I signed on to my computer and started looking around, and uh, there really isn't any logging companies anywhere that I could find. Uh, they may, there may have been one or two, but they were over 50 miles away, and they're way out like in between the cities and the wilderness. They're not, they're not located centrally around the city and go out and find wood. They're out there, I guess, where the wood is, and they're hard to find. Uh, but when I search logging companies now, uh, I found predominantly sawmills. So I started looking around at the sawmills just to see what kind of wood they had and everything. And uh, some of them, it'll say like logs. And I thought maybe they offered like log delivery or whatever. But when you click on logs, they're talking about buying logs. I was saying, was you buying or was you selling? Well, they are buying. Uh, so... Uh, you want to click on logs and then there say it says we'll buy your logs if you have storm damage or whatever give us a call we'll send a timber expert out there and buy your logs up well that's the opposite of what i was looking to do so uh that isn't going to work but uh, now one of these sawmills i wanted to get into uh they have an option where they have all their cutoffs and junk wood and slab wood and everything they just take all that junk and they throw it in a pile there well they sell that stuff for firewood, and uh, if you read the description, it says uh, it says uh, for campfires and fire pit wood. It doesn't say they don't even say fireplace, and there's a reason for that. The reason that they say that is is because that wood is not seasoned wood. It's rough cut lumber right off of logs that they brought in from the from you know timber truck, the timber or a logging company or whatever. They go out and pick up a log and. The, you saw it and then you dry it later so they take all the scrap junk off of those sawmill logs and throw it in the pile right so uh, it's not seasoned wood it's green wood but uh, they sell it for what they say uh, twenty dollars a scoop there now and I was just kinda thinking would that be worth it for me to dry it's about it's about 35 miles away or for it's it's a good 40 minute ride each way to, to pick this stuff up if I needed wood sometime and I just wanted to take buy some wood, I could pay the I could pay the money and and get a couple of truck loads of wood and take my trailer out there and and then resell that wood and mark it up and make money, right? Well, that was that was my idea, but when it comes down to it, I don't think it's even worth doing that. Uh, and I don't want to talk bad because that's a great deal. If, if you live right around a sawmill like that and you've got five miles, ten miles, and you got a pickup truck or a trailer and you're doing campfires and bonfires, I mean, if you fall into that Venn diagram of the people, am I close? Do I have a pickup truck? Do I burn campfires and bonfires? If you're in the center of that uh, diagram there, uh, then that's right for you. It would be a good deal to drive up there and pay 20 bucks and get a truckload of, of uh, uh, scrap junk wood and burn it in your bonfires. But uh, what I'm finding out though, what I, for me, I just don't think it would work because it's still green, like I said, and they sell it for $20 a scoop now. So uh, that's something else I wanted to mention. What is a scoop? Because uh, that varies very uh, vastly. Uh, there's a vast difference 
of uh, scoops out there and uh, if you got a skid steer those scoops on a skid steer range from uh, half a half a yard all the way up to maybe two or three cubic yards if they got a really big one if you got a big front end loader I don't know you might have like a three cubic yard uh, scoop on that or something there but uh, the best I could probably guess is that it's going to take at least two scoops to make one rick of firewood, which is a third of a cord. Uh, uh, so that's 64 cubic feet. I, I mean, I think there's 27 cubic feet and, and one, uh, one cubic yard. So those scoops are done in, in cubic yards usually. It's like a three-yard scoop or something. Which So there's 27 cubic feet and one cubic yard. And it's gonna and and there's 64 cubic feet in a in a face in a half of a cord. So I don't know. It's tough to say. That's what I'm saying. At uh, you don't know the size of the scoop uh, and 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 you don't know what what you're getting there. But I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it's gonna take at least two scoops to make a face or a uh, a rick of firewood, which would be forty dollars, right? Well, I was gonna call them on the phone live with you guys and just put them on speaker and talk to them and uh, and just ask them. I haven't even done that yet. I didn't call them on my own, but I'm a little bit leery of calling a business and not giving them consent to uh, record the conversation and then put it on uh, YouTube and monetize it, uh, especially if they're saying business names and that type of thing. I just, I'm not a patent, copyright, trademark attorney and that type of thing, and, and these, this stuff gets all crazy, the laws. Uh, for example, uh, in the states of Pennsylvania and California, it's what's called a two-party consent rule. So if you're going to record somebody's phone conversations now, both parties have to give consent. And I don't know if that can be oral consent in the recording or if you have to actually have it on paper and have it written down there and get written permission to record the conversation. And I also saw information out there that says if you do record a conversation that the uh, the recordings of those conversations should be held basically privately and shared only with the parties involved directly so like if you were to take it and broadcast it to a million people on YouTube and monetize it and make money off of it and everything and and there's brand names and business names involved and all that type of thing uh, it gets crazy so uh, anyway that's I'm off on a tangent okay so back to the what now uh, so uh, to go out there and take my truck and trailer and pay forty dollars for a rick of firewood that is not that is still green and it's all over the it's big long slabs and it's uh, and it's chunks and there's cookies there's I mean when you look at the pile there's just cutoffs and chunks and cookies and slabs and and about twenty percent of it is actually kind of like you know usable firewood uh, but my truck has a topper on it and that's another thing too so they couldn't come in with a loader and dump it right into my truck with a hard cover on it and I like that cover because it when it rains I can put wood in it and it'll stay covered overnight and then I can go deliver it anyways so if I was to take my truck they would have to take the scoop and dump it on the ground and then I'd have to pick it up off the ground and hand throw it in the truck and then they could dump it in the trailer but then I'd have to bring that wood home 40 miles and then sort through it all, dump it all out all over the ground, sort through it all, still take my chainsaw out, cut it all up, measure it, I'd end up with a bunch of junk and a bunch of cookies and, and crap that wouldn't even be usable. And then I'd still have to use my log splitter because there's slab wood from uh, live edge slabs and all that kind of stuff, you know, that's real wide. And so you'd still have to take your log splitter and split it all. It would take me, I mean, I, I kind of, it'd take me almost a full day to process a, a rick of firewood if I did that. I'd, it's, it's, it's 40 minutes each way of driving, and you'd have to deal with them, getting them out there for half an hour or so, loading the truck, and then you'd have to load the truck, drive it home, sort it, and then still use your chainsaw. And if you know how to use a chainsaw, when you're, when you're dealing with all those little cutoff pieces, they fly all over the place. I mean, you, you stomp on them with your foot and you hit it with the chainsaw and it grabs it and picks it up off the ground and throws it and then you got to bend over and pick it up and, and try to get it somewhere uh, solid where you, can, where you can cut it and everything. So it's not, it's not really an easy deal. I can run right up here. I got two of the three tree services I work with are fairly close to my house now. So I could run up there and they have logs 
I mean, by the time I drove 40 miles to the sawmill, I could run up to the tree service and buck up a bunch of wood and have it bucked up perfect lengths and then run my log splitter and split it. It takes two or three hours to get a, a rick of firewood and get it home uh, from the tree service. It would take me from nine in the morning till about four in the afternoon to drive out to a sawmill, get that, bring it home, throw it on the ground, sort it all out, cut it up. So uh, that's not going to be worth it for me. And uh, I'm still looking uh, for a logger. So uh, the, the bottom line is if you're going to buy logs, a sawmill isn't always going to be the place to go. Some businesses may have uh, divisions or they may be willing to sell you logs. But the, uh, the loggers and an independent log truck operator that just hauls, that owns his own truck and hauls logs for, for uh, logging companies, that's who you need to find. Uh, so if you were out driving around and you saw one, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to, you know, take their name down in case I ever need them. Or you'd have to just go sit up at a truck stop somewhere. Or every time you drive past a gas station with a truck stop or something, uh, there's one up here uh, towards the interstate there. It's a big pilot gas station and they have uh, truck stops and a, and a store and everything. If you just kept your eye out, maybe one day there'd be a, a, a logging truck sitting in there and you could just drive in and try to meet the guy is all you could do. It's, it's a, it's a right, right place at the right time kind of deal. And, uh, unless you know how to call, you could get on and try to find some type of uh, trucking brokerage website. There's those type of things where you can maybe look them up or something and try to find one. Uh, but that's basically what I learned is you, you need a, a truck operator or you need a logging company. So uh, the sawmill is probably not going to work for me. And now uh, I know this has kind of been a long ramble and uh, maybe it, it'll be interesting information. It might help somebody out there that's, that's thinking about looking, looking into this stuff. But uh, for me, I, I'm just going to have to keep using the tree services and uh, I don't even really have a place right now where I could have a big semi 18 wheeler truck come in and dump uh, 20, 30 cords of wood off uh, and then have a place to process it. Now I'd, I have tree services and they let me use their yard and stuff, but uh, uh, I couldn't have a log truck come into somebody else's business and, and, and drop a bunch of wood up there on their property. So uh, I'm not even really there yet to where I could do that. But if I wanted to get restaurants, I mean, pretty much that's what it would take now. Uh, I mean, I, I have a little bit of wood that I could sell a restaurant. So if I wanted to make some contacts, I could go sell them. I could go sell them a quart of cherry or something, but then I'd be done. And that's the thing is all the wood that I have is going to sell this year. I mean, I sell it to retail people, so it's just kind of not really worth it for me. I mean, I have cherry and it's all going to sell uh, regardless. So if I went up and got a restaurant, I could go dump it on them real quick and be done. But then they'd be calling me back and I won't have anything for a long time. And I don't even know when I'll have it. So, uh, all right. Well, thanks for joining me, everybody. Um, I think I covered basically most of what I wanted to cover. I just kind of wanted to talk about this situation and, uh, and let you know what I found out in my market. But, uh, I'm going to sign off for now and uh, don't forget to give me a like and a subscribe if you enjoy the firewood content and everything else that, that I do and uh, I'll catch you guys next time.